Greetings, it's Maxo Diddly, and today I am going to be showing you how you can encrypt and decrypt a string using Python. So let's get into it. Firstly, you need to import the cryptography library. So, if you're in Visual Studio, you can go to your Python environments, and you can right click on your environment, go to manage Python packages, you can then type in cryptography and then run the command pip install cryptography. If you're not in Visual Studio, you can do this elsewhere. With that out of the way, let's get into the code. So at the top of your code, we're going to do from cryptography.fernet import fernet. We'll be using this to do the encryption and decryption. So firstly, we're going to be creating a function. We're going to do def generate underscore key. Key equals fernet dot generate key with open secret dot key wb as key file key underscore file dot write key. So let's break this down. This function is going to generate our key for our encryption and decryption. And an encryption key is a special kind of password used in the encryption process to transform readable data into a scrambled version. And the purpose is to keep the data secure. If someone intercepts our scrambled data, they won't understand it, unless they have the key, which is essential for decrypting it. So make sure you don't delete this file after you encrypt your data, because otherwise it's going to be very hard to get it back. And so we can generate a key, and then we can write it to a file, and for WB means we're going to write to the file in binary mode. And this is the preferred way to store an encryption key. And then this line of code here literally puts our key into the file. The next thing we're going to do is def load key. So let's say you've already got an encryption key that you want to use. This function is going to be responsible for getting that encryption key from the file. So we can then do return open secret.keyrb.read. So wb means write binary, rb means read binary. I'd also like to say you can customize the file path if you want to, but I'm gonna keep it as secret.key for now. Now that we've got our key functions sorted, let's go into the actual encryption and decryption. So we're going to do def encrypt underscore message, message and key. So this is going to be our encrypt message function, and we're gonna pass in a message that we want to encrypt, and the encryption key we want to use to encrypt it. Then we do encoded underscore message, equals message.encode. So we're turning the message into a into a format that Fernet can understand and work with. So we're going to be converting it into bytes as opposed to its string format. And then we're going to do f equals Fernet key. We're going to be setting up our Fernet tool and we're going to tell it to use our key. And then we can do encrypted underscore message equals f dot encrypt encoded underscore message. This line of code does the actual encryption. We're using Fernet to encrypt the message, basically. And then we're going to return the encrypted message to wherever we call the function. And we're going to do a very similar thing with our decrypt message function. So we're going to do def decrypt underscore message, encrypted underscore message and key. So the key you want to use to try and decrypt the message and encrypted message is the message we want to decrypt. So we're going to do f equals Fernet key because we need to set up our Fernet tool again and pass in the key. And then we're going to do decrypted underscore message equals f dot decrypt encrypted underscore message. So we're going to just decrypt the message using our Fernet tool. Then we're going to do return decrypted underscore message dot decode. So we're going to return our decrypted message to wherever we call the function. We're also going to decode it so it's not just a bunch of bytes. So it's back to its readable format. And that's it for this tutorial. So let's put our code into action. So I've got a few lines of code. We're going to firstly generate a key. So we're going to be creating our key file with our encryption key. Then we're going to load the key from the file by doing key equals load underscore key. You don't necessarily need to do both of these. Like, you know, you might generate a key once and then other times you run your program, you only want to do decryption and you don't need to generate a new key. So next we're going to do encrypted equals encrypt underscore message. Larian, please fix Minfara in BG3, and then we pass in the key. Why are we doing this? Well, basically, there's about 1,500 lines of dialogue that don't really appear in the game because of a silly bug. And this is just a reminder to fix it. And we also pass in the key because we need to encrypt the message. And we need to know which key to use to encrypt the message. Then we're going to do print encrypted plus encrypted.decode. So we have to do the .decode here because we need to be able to convert it from bytes 
into a string so we can print it to the Python console, but you don't need to decode it if you were to store it in, let's say, a file. And then we're going to do decrypted equals decrypt underscore message encrypted. So we're going to pass in our encrypted message and then we pass in key because it's the key we need to use to decrypt it. And then we do print decrypted plus decrypted. It's going to print our decrypted string, which will be our original message. So we're going to save our work and we're going to hit play. And it's quite long, but if we were to drag our console to make it bigger, that's our encrypted message and then that's it decrypted. So... Thanks for being a great audience, be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more Python tutorials. Thanks for watching!